Good morning. I'm Reverend Neil Lachlan MacDonald, Minister of Loch Broom and Coigach Free Church. And in many instances, people have asked me, spoken to me, we've had discussions about some kind of formula that there might be, a, a programme of events as to how we might live effectively as believers in the Lord Jesus, how we might live victoriously as Christians. Of course, there are many places that we can go to in the Bible to find mandates and commissions and instruction on how we might fulfil that. Indeed, we could spend many weeks uh, looking at this very theme. But let me just give you a couple of verses from First Thessalonians, where the Apostle Paul exhorts us to rejoice always, pray continually, and give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. These few words contain a guide on how we should live out our faith on a daily basis, not just as individual believers, but also as a collective body of Christ, as the church. Each of the exhortations that he gives there are in the imperative and are therefore commands. They're not simply uh, a group of words or teachings that we can choose whether or not to follow, but they are commands that come from Scripture that we should obey. And there are words included there, always, continually, and in all circumstances. Now, the prerequisite for this is that you are in Christ. And so that's the first question that we have this morning. Are you in Christ? Do you know the hope of Jesus within your heart and life? Have you come to him in faith? Have you turned away from the things of the world? Have you taken up your cross and have you followed him as he exhorted the rich young man that we considered last week? Are you in Christ? Well, if you're in Christ this morning, if you're walking with the Lord, then his exhortation to you is to rejoice always, to pray continually and to give thanks in all circumstances. Shall we take them, just those three headings, just for a brief moment this morning as we dwell on the word of God and his instruction uh, to us. Rejoice always. Sounds great, but in practice it can be difficult, can't it? It's easy to be joyful in good times, but less so in times of hardship, trial or tribulation. However, this verse would seem to instruct us to rejoice not just in the good times, but always, regardless of the situation. How is that possible? Some of you who memorised your catechism uh, in your youth will remember its first question. What is the chief end of man? What's man's chief end? Man's chief end is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. And that's very helpful for us as we think about how can we be joyful even in the hard times of life? Well, simply put, it's if we are trusting in the Lord. If our identity is found in Christ and in his finished work, if we recognise that this life is fleeting, time moves, but that we will come to our earthly end at some point and most likely sooner than we would imagine or like. A huge eternity awaits, it beckons us. And so if our hope is found in Jesus, then we recognise that life is much more than just what we see here and now. And we recognise that any present sufferings are not worth comparing with the crown of glory which awaits all those who follow Jesus. Paul in Philippians says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. It's all about rejoicing in him. Indeed, Paul himself was able to rejoice even in the hardships of life in Acts 16 imprisoned for his faith. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and all the prisoners were listening to them. I'm sure amazed at the fact that these men could be full of joy, and the joy of the Lord given their circumstances. But their identity was found in the Lord. It was beyond their present circumstances. And therefore, Paul could say, Colossians 1, Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake. It's quite an amazing viewpoint to hold. James, the brother of Jesus, said, count it all joy, my brothers, when you encounter various trials and temptations. It sounds counterintuitive, doesn't it? 
But if you're trusting in the Lord Jesus and your home is in heaven, then regardless of what comes to pass, we can always maintain joy. And joy, of course, is different to happiness. Happiness is an emotion that comes and goes. Gospel joy is deep-seated and transcends our circumstances. Then he says that we should pray continually. Pray continually. Prayer is the great gift of heaven to us, that we have been ushered into the presence of God through Jesus, that we have open access to the throne room of heaven. And he encourages us to cultivate a lifestyle of prayer, diligence in prayer, to be disciplined in how we pray, but to remember that prayer is communication, and communication is not just formal. Prayer is not to be relegated to certain times of day and certain ways and in certain manners. The Lord wants us to engage with him. He wants us to be in relationship with him. Think of it like a marriage. In marriage, we don't just talk to our spouses at particular times or in formal conversations. No, we love one another and therefore we talk. We talk about trivial things and we talk about important things. We share our thoughts and our concerns, our delights and our failings. We speak on the phone, we speak face to face, we speak in shouts, we speak in whispers, we speak incredulously, we speak with a smile or we speak with a frown. The point is we speak in different ways at different times and for different reasons. And that's exactly how it should be in prayer with the Lord, our Heavenly Father, who loves us more than any other, who sent his Son to die in our place and who wants to be in communion and communication with us. Jesus himself gave us a great example to follow both in the Lord's Prayer, or should we call it the Disciples' Prayer in Matthew 6, but also in his own life. Often Jesus would withdraw to pray. Often he would give thanks to God before carrying out some miracle. Often he would spend whole nights in prayer, different ways, different times, different means. There are times when we need to confess our sin. There are times where we want to express our appreciation for God and his creative wonder. There are times when we want to express our love. Times when we want to admit our fears. Times when we want to seek guidance. Times where we want to exercise thanksgiving. This can all be done through prayer. And Paul's directive to the Christian believer is that we should be cultivating a lifestyle of continual prayer. That doesn't mean that we should be on our knees in our in our bedrooms with the doors closed, though there is time for that as well, but that we can pray to the Lord at any time, in any way, about anything. And then finally, he tells us to give thanks in all circumstances. Now note here, Paul does not say that we should give thanks for all circumstances, but in all circumstances. And there is a difference. Obviously, we shouldn't be thankful for injustice or tragedy or disease or for war. None of these things are good. However, we are to be grateful in every circumstance. Because like our joy, our thankfulness is anchored to our relationship in Christ rather than the circumstances of life that surrounds us. We have to remind ourselves, and the Bible does it for us, that he is always with us. Joshua 1. We will never be separated from him. Romans 8. The Lord is at work in every situation. Romans 8. God will supply our every need. Philippians 4. He will give us the strength we need. Philippians 4. We will live even though we die. John 11. No one can snatch us from his hand. John 6. God will finish the work that he has begun. Philippians 1. And the list goes on. There may be very many difficulties surrounding us. But if our trust is found in Christ, then we can give thanks in every circumstance, knowing that these things are temporal and they too shall pass. But the Lord and his word remains forever. Jesus himself said in John 16, in the world you will have trouble. Not you might have, not you could have, but that you will have trouble. But take heart, for I have overcome the world. We struggle with these commands. Too often we find ourselves swallowed up by complaints rather than gratitude, a sour mood rather than an attitude of deep-seated joy. 
At times we have to remind ourselves to pray and to talk to God. At times we're not very thankful. So it's time for us to get serious, to be honest with ourselves, and to recognise that we lack joy only when we lose sight of God. We become lax in prayerfulness because we begin to think too highly of ourselves, and we find gratitude elusive because we've put our focus in the wrong place. These three commands, whilst in one sense are simple, they are yet hugely profound and difficult to maintain. But the Lord has promised that he will give us the necessary means, the necessary capacity to fulfil these things. So may we be a people who rejoice always, who pray continually and give thanks in all circumstances, knowing that that is God's will for us in Christ Jesus. Thank you.